Stay by faith, just stay by faith, amen. Because watch this if the devil could have stopped you, yeah. can we just can we can we just meditate on that for a second? How many of you know that that you do have an enemy who hates your life? He hates why you were born. But watch this if he could stop you, he could. And the fact that you're here demonstrates. The victory that God wants to manifest in your life. Anybody just received that tonight? Anybody? Amen. Praise God. Well, what well, we are, we are on week four tonight of this amazing series where we've been learning. But but what, what, what's the name of the series? Everybody's it's called what? It's called warning. So what's it called? And, and we found out the, the short version of the, the series name we found out last week. It's called what? Whoa. Y'all remember that? Oh, wh wh why? Because, because cause God is saying that, that when you come up against something that demands your attention, in other words, how many of you know pride loves for you to keep going in the present state that you're in? Because as long as you don't address it, it can continue to undress you. How are we doing? And, 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 that, and that's why this whole series is called Warning, but, but the sub, subtitle is just called Whoa. And, and once we start seeing symptoms of pride and once we start acknowledging, and I don't know about you, but, but what, what I've learned in this series is some things that I didn't know was pride is pride. Come on, talk to me. And, and it's also called what? It's called Warning what? Do what? Humbled or what? Or humiliated, and then it says, and it's a decision, it says what? So you decide. And how many of you have, have been blessed thus far? This is week four. We've been talking about just two people. It's all good. Uh, I'm not going to take it. Uh, <laughs> this is week four, and, and we've been learning about in, in this series. And like I said, it's going to take another turn. Uh, when we come back, we're going to stay on the topic, but we're going to begin to really get a revelation what it means to walk in humility. Amen. Um, but today we're, we're going to finish out getting an understanding of what does it mean to walk in pride? Because some of us, like I said, are walking in it. Like, remember I said, pride's like what? It's like bad breath. Everybody knows you have it except the person that's suffering from it. Come on, talk to me. And, and, and so, so today we're, we're going to finish getting that revelation and understanding. And, and I pray like this. Watch this. Pride is the person that is sitting there and believes we're not talking about you. Other spirit, I'm, I'm flowing in the gifts already. That, that's pride. Pride is, well, I'll, you know, next week we'll, we'll talk about me, humility. Okay, that's pride. And, and, and we need to constantly be open to realizing that, that the enemy is always trying to get you to be natural, to get you to flow in your fallen nature, get you actually, here's what it is, to do it without God. And that's pride. Amen? All right, so let's jump right into to this. All right, so uh, is this working? Here we go. Let's see. Y'all playing already? Y'all playing with me? Here we go. All right. Is it working? Did I do that? Did I do that? No? What's all the different tricks y'all told me that I got to do? Say this. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we'll scrap it. Nah, nah, just, just flow with me. All right, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 23, verse 12 through 13. Matthew chapter what I say, 23, verse 12 through 13, and, and, and I pray that you're, and again, like I said, midweek service, is, this, is, this is Bible study, okay? Midweek service, uh, at any time, at any other time, this is the time where y'all need to be studying. So, so I'm praying that as we go over this passage of Scripture, this isn't the first time you read it or the third time you read it. I pray that you're going home and you're, you're getting into this, all right? So let's read. So just look straight if, if, it, if, it is, if that's not your case, okay? All right, let's read. It says what? Matthew 23, 12, it says what? Whoever does what? And if you were reading your Bible in the red letter edition, you would find that these letters are red. Why? Because who is speaking? Jesus. And he says this. He says what? Whoever exalts who? Himself with what? With haughtiness and empty pride shall be what? 
humbled shall be what? Brought low. And it says what? And whoever does what? Humbles themselves. And here's the amazing part. Like I said, you're, you're either going to be humbled or humiliated. You actually decide either one. Okay, next, next, next verse says what? Whoever what? Whoever has a what? A modest opinion of himself and behaves accordingly. And we found out that the Bible says that as a man or woman thinks in their heart, that's who they are. How many of you know that you cannot, everybody look straight and listen to me, you cannot separate the way you think from the way you act. Come on now. Let me say it again. Y'all didn't like that. I don't care. You cannot separate the way you think from the way you act. Watch this. Somebody's lying. You understand? When the way we think and the way we act is different, no, it ain't. Somebody's lying. Because watch this, if they're different, they're really not different. We're just pretending. How are we doing? Does that make sense? And so, so watch this. And so he says, but whoever has a modest opinion of himself and behaves accordingly, what? Shall be raised to honor. And, and this is the amazing part. And I hope out of all of this that we really understand God's heart that you were not created to live a low life. Y'all with me? How many of you know that most of the drama and most of the, the anxiety and most of the stuff that we go through actually isn't the devil? It is, it is self-inflicted because we are ignorant of what God really intended for our life to be. And many of us are actually working against what he is trying to cause to happen naturally in our lives. Does that make sense? So, so watch this, verse 13. So here, here's the subtitle. What does it say? Whoa. Come on. It says what? But who? It says what? But woe to you scribes and Pharisees. And what did he call them? He called them pretenders. He called them the Greek word is hypocrite. Hypocrite. It, it, it means an actor. And it says what? For what did they do? For you shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. Next verse. It says what? For what? For you neither enter yourselves in. In other words, so, see, watch this. Here's what's so dangerous about pride, because when we operate in pride, people can't see the God that's in you. All they see is the person you're pretending to be. And watch this, and they're not even seeing someone who is actually living the life they're pretending. Y'all remember those days? Anybody ever been there? Where, where, where you're actually pretending. I remember I would shared this before when I was in college. I, I pledged a fraternity. It's called Cap Alpha Psi. And we, you know, we, we, it was, we were, one of the nicknames was the pretty boys. Okay. Okay. All right. That's okay. I don't, I don't even want it. Yeah. I don't trust it right now. So, so, so they called us the pretty boys. And, uh, and one of the things that we did every Wednesday, we would put on a business suit and we would walk around campus, you know, with a briefcase on. And, and guess what I would do? I wouldn't go to class. I would just walk around campus <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the briefcase on. In a business suit. Why? Because I was pretending. Why? Because I wanted you to believe that I was who I was not. How many of you know that, that my biggest fear when I used to do that was that somebody would stop me and ask me what was in the briefcase? <laughs> you want to know why? Because what? Whoa. Because guess what? Wasn't nothing in it. <laughs> and, and, and how many of you know that's what we do when we're not living the life. It, it actually, y'all remember back in the days when you were pretending to be? I remember there was a time I was pretending to be the person I am today. Can y'all handle that? Okay, all right. Y'all, can you handle that? that? That actually used to be a pickup line. I'm godly. I'm a man of God. I have a call in my life. Look straight because I see some other jokers in here too. <laughs> and, and how many of you know that that is tiring? And it's all, it also brings its own anxiety walking around pretending to be somebody that you know you're not trying to cause other people to believe. And you're praying that no one will push the button on your briefcase. And that the thing will flip open and everybody will realize you are fake. How are we doing? Does it make any sense? Well, watch this. He says, what? Neither do you yourselves enter, nor do you allow those who are about to go in to do so. How many of you know that when people see you pretending and they find out, man, that ain't even real. Well, 
I used to want to be that till I found out that it's a fake. Y'all hear me? And, and that's the problem with pride is we pretend to, to be someone that we're actually not and we're misrepresenting God and the people who really want him get, watch this, they don't get to the door, they get to your presence. We stopped them from getting to the door. They can't get to the door because the doorway to God for them is you first. How are we doing? And when they find out you're a fake, then they say, eh, I knew it wasn't real. How are we doing? Come on, let's read. It says, intro, it says what? Pride is what? Pride is dangerous, especially in the lives of believers. For Just because of what I just said, it says what? Jesus taught that when believers walk in pride, they become a... They become a whoa. That, that's what people say. <laughs> they, they get up to you like, whoa, like that ain't even real. And watch this. It says we become a roadblock and what? That hinders others' ability to see and experience the kingdom of God. Come on. Y'all remember this next? It says what? It says warning people who fail to humble themselves will be humiliated and and, and let's work on these two definitions, and, and some of this uh, for the next couple of minutes is going to be review, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into these expressions of pride. But, but here's our definition. Do you remember? Let's read our definition of pride. Pride is what? Believing that you can do a better job with your life than God. That's so deep. That's what pride is. See, some people think, you know, pride is he thinks he's all that, or pride, she thinks she's all that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's in there. But the core of pride is is you think you can do a better job than God. And, and you say, no, that's not true, Pastor. No, no, that's not true. Well, how come you're not following his instruction? Come on, talk to me. You know, it, the, the, it, it's amazing. I'll, I'll never forget. I don't know why. Can I just tell stories? I'm just, just flowing here. I, I remember I met someone who was trying to get me into uh, the Masons. I don't know why I'm here. This is just where God has us for today. Um, and, and he called me over to his house. And he wanted to impress me. That's why. That's why we're here. Okay, thank you very much. And he wanted to impress me because we were both fraternity uh, members of the same fraternity. And how many of you know, so I pledged Kappa, and I thought that that was, that, okay, good, I'm a Kappa. And then he says, come on, son, I want to show you something. Kappa's not enough. See, how many of you know that, that when, some of y'all are, y'all ain't upset, are you? So how many of you know that whenever you have a substitute for something, you're finally going to realize, man, that's not enough. It, it takes more. And so I'll never forget, I went over to his house, and he, and he was telling me, he was like, and I didn't realize I was, I was in an interest meeting. <laughs> I was over there for dinner, and I think uh, Pastor Dawn couldn't come for whatever, because they actually asked me, bring your wife, bring your wife. And she couldn't come. I think she was teaching or whatever. And so I'm there, and he, and he was telling me, there's more. There's more to life than Kappa. I was like, well, I, I was starting to figure that out. I was like, yeah, I, that is, I, that's the truth. And he said, it's called masonry. And I said, Okay. And then he gets out the Masonic Bible. And it, it was interesting. And, and before, so, so like the first 30, can y'all handle this? I'm just flowing. I'm just being obedient. The, the first 30 pages of the Masonic Bible had like stuff that they added. You know, it was like 30, 40 pages of just stuff. And he was just going through and, and he was explaining to me. He said, do you know that I can stand? He was trying to impress me. He said, do you know that I can stand in front of a locomotive train and it will stop? And I, I said, no. And he said, you want to know why? Because every, and I don't know if this is true. He said, every, probably every time you say every instead of, or any or all, unless you're talking about God, that ain't true. And he said, he said, because every engineer is a mason. And I can stand on the train tracks. Uh-oh. I can stand on the train tracks. And I can wave my hand. And it'll stop. Again, what was he trying to do? He was trying to impress me. And he said, do you know all the presidents all the presidents were Masons except for two, and those two were assassinated. And I'm, look, I'm looking at him, I'm like, okay, all right, all right. And, and, and he goes, and, and this is the word. You see that, that this is ingrained. Masonry is ingrained in the word. And all right, I said, okay. And I said, so, so this is your Bible? He said, yep. And I said, this is, your, this is the Masonic Bible. He said, yep. I said, do you believe this? He said, yes. And I said, can I see it? So I grabbed a big old Bible. Flipped it over to the back, opened it up to Revelations, read the last passage. I said, can you read this? And it says, whoa. That's what it said. It said, woe to anyone who would add or 
take away from any of the verses or any of the blessings that's in this book, they will receive all the curses that's in it. I looked at him, shut the book, gave him the grip, <laughs> set him out. Why did I say that? Because, because I'm not talking to a bunch of Masons or Kappas, but how many of you know that the world is constantly trying to impress you to cause you to believe that doing it, God, that you know what? We can add and we can take away from what God said and we can still get God's results. Somebody say, whoa. Come on. So therefore, what is pride? Pride is believing that what? That you can do a better job with your life than God. What does pride do? Pride exalts self above what God wants and Jesus was talking to his disciples and said, we love you, we love you, Jesus, we love you, Jesus, we love you, Jesus, we worship and adore you, right? Just want to tell you. And Jesus said, well, if you love me, do what I say. See, see how many of you know, and, and we're going to start talking about walking in humility. Some of us think walking in humility is wearing white gloves or having a sad face or, oh, to shave your head bald. No, it fell out. That's right. Humility is placing what he said above what I think or what I feel. How, how are we doing? Does it make sense? So watch this. So, so here, here's the other word we need to understand. Other word is humiliate. And we're going to use these, these classic expressions. The word humiliate. And like I said, we found out that what we thought was pride, we didn't know actually what pride was. Pride's a lot deeper than we think. But same deal with humiliate. Last time we found out that, that to be humiliated actually really is people finding what has already happened in you. So well, what's our definition of humiliate? It says what? To make what? To make to feel ashamed of yourself. How? By injuring your self-respect or your self-love. How many of you know the Bible says that God, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. See, the reality is, is when we're connected to God, we actually receive self-love and self-respect. When we are disconnected or when there is distance from God, it actually humiliates us. Y'all understanding? See, people can't humiliate you. I said this last week. People can just push the button that's already humiliated. How are we doing? And, and watch this. As we begin to find out how much God loves us and who he created us to be and the, and the lifestyle of humility and grace we actually find ourselves that, like I said last week, that you really are not humiliatable if you know who you are. How are we doing? We good? And, and watch this. And, and you can come to church with a plaid shirt on, you know, and don't care whether plaid is in or not. I didn't put this shirt on and say, now, is this in season or not or whatever? Or, you know, I got it from, from, uh, from Marshalls, you know. I, huh. I said, I like it. And I don't care who, do, who likes it or not. And, and, and this is important why I'm, I'm, I'm just flowing for whatever reason. But, but God is really trying to get us to realize the heart of the relationship that he wants us to have with him. Is this making sense? How are we doing? All right. All right, let's read it. It says what? When we do what? When we lose what? When we lose respect for God, we will, also, we will always lose respect for ourselves. It's so, so, so. That's why I said nobody can humiliate you. But when you lose respect for who he is, you'll lose respect for who you are. And you'll be walking around with a briefcase with nothing in it, with a suit on and nowhere to go. How are we doing? Come on, let's read. It says what? The five classic expressions of pride. We're going to finish this today. And we'll, we'll wrap this up and we'll have time for Q&A. Uh, if you remember, we did the first three. I'm going to zip through the first three and I'm going to land on the last two. Can I do that? Can I zip and land? All right, let's read. It says what? Number one is what? Y'all remember this? The first expression was what? Selfish ambition. Only got one fill in here because we went over it. It says what? What is it? It says what? I'm so what? Preoccupied with my own goals that I have no time to help others. It says what? My advancement is too important. I have to invest it all in myself. And it's funny in the world, the world says be ambitious. You must be ambitious. Well, you, you want to know why? Because how many of you know that when you're ambitious, you are predictable? Y'all didn't hear me. 
When, when you are ambitious, you're predictable. I know what you want, and I know you will cheat, lie to get it. You know, and, and instead of, watch this, instead of being satisfied, I say this all the time, that a man or a woman who's satisfied can't be tempted. How are we doing? You want to walk? I'm already full. All right, come on, number two. Number two is what? Is what? Preoccupation with who? What, what was the second? The second expression of pride, what? Preoccupation with what? With appearances. And, and it, does that mean someone who, who's always, you know, dressing up or not dressing up? Yes and no. But, but it's deeper than that. We found out that someone who has a preoccupation with appearances is someone that's always, they're more concerned about what people think about them than what God has already said about them. How, how are we doing? And, and, and when you are preoccupied with appearances, you become a puppet. Talk to me. You, you don't even get dressed for you. You get dressed for them. Talk to me. So th 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 there are people who are so preoccupied with appearances that they actually chose a profession that their parents would like or that men would like. Talk to me. Or that women would like. I remember I, 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 I took a job just because I could get some money. And I didn't realize, oh, I got to do that? <laughs> and I quit. See, see, but how many of you know that, that if you're so concerned about appearances or what you can get, you'll find yourself being puppeted. Let's read. It says what? Read with me. It says what? What if what? What if God asked you to do something? Read with me. Y'all don't even want to read now. What if God asked you to? Y'all read already. Like, oh, whoa. It says what? What if God asked you to do something in a service or in front of your friends that might make you look foolish? Here's the scary part. If you'd be honest, you know he did already. You know he did already. You, you, you know, whether it is in a service or in your life or in your home or with another person. I remember one time I, I was at, yeah, I guess this is just story tale. I'm just telling you, I'm just bearing my soul. I remember I, one time I was, in, uh, I was in New York. I used to work as a national sales manager. And I'll never forget, I went into a bathroom and the, the, the smell like almost like made me throw up. I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like that. And, and it was amazing. I walked in. I was like, what in the world? And it, it wasn't doo-doo smell. It was, it was body odor smell. And I was like, what? It, you know, like, I'd never smelled anything. I mean, this was like aged. You know what I'm saying? Like someone worked, you know, somebody worked on this. This was time to smell like this. And, and, I, and I walked in, and I'm washing my, you know, I went and was choking, was washing my hands. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit just said, I want him, 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 I want him. Got louder and louder and louder, and then the door opened, it was a homeless man. And the Holy Spirit said, minister to him. And I said, no. And I walked out, no, no, and I let him walk out the door. And the condemnation, it wasn't even condemnation, it was, it was, it was, I miss being who I was supposed to be because I was more concerned about what it would look like doing what God asked me to do. How are we doing? Come on, let's read. No, number three, I'm, I'm going to get you, this, this is a review. Number three is what? Y'all remember this one? Come on now, is what? Disrespect to who? Disrespect towards authority. It says what? Before God can ever trust a person to be in a position of authority, you fill in, the person must first learn how to be under authority. And if y'all remember, we found out that, that, that the test of this is when God would ask you to be under the authority of someone that you believe is beneath you. Talk to me. You know, my boss is stupid. My boss is a poor leader. My boss doesn't know what they're doing, but you, you kept missing it, but he or she is my boss. Talk to me. How many of you know that you're going to find yourself in positions where you're not qualified? Talk to me. Where you don't measure up, where you're only there by his grace. Talk to me. And you're going to want someone to be able to follow you, even though you know, hey, I'm only here because God loves me. How are we doing? Making sense? All right, come on, here's number four. Th th this is where we're going we're gonna to land on these two today. This is our, our assignment for today. Number four is what? Here we go. Number four. Here, here's the fourth classic expression of pride. It's what? Stubborn addictions 
and anxiety. Come on. It's what? Y'all don't even want to read. Y'all be getting scared. It's what? It's stubborn addictions and what? And anxiety. It says, look, it says most addictions are rooted somewhere in pride. And, and, and before you, you know, how our minds go when you see addiction, of course, first time you think about addiction, what do you think about? Crack, cocaine, weed. Weed's not addictive. Weed, yes it is. <laughs> Let me just go there since we're here. It's like, weed is not addictive. But you know what is? Why you're doing it is. What you're trying to escape is. When you're high and you don't think about what made you get high is. How are we doing? But we're not just talking about that. How many of you know that, that, that stubborn addictions are, are those things that we know we're doing in place of allowing him to fulfill us? Come on. How are we doing? Come on. What was it? Shopping. Come on. Gossiping. Talk, talk to me. You know, uh, uh, or, 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 or like I said, just, just all of those things that we get caught up in that, watch this, that God has told you, hey, that's a little too much now. Talk to me. Hey, you need some moderation in that area, and you keep doing it. How we doing? Come on. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. Let's read it. It says what? It says what? Let what? Let no one say what? When he is tempted, that I'm tempted from God. This is important. It says what? For God is what? Incapable of being tempted by what? By what is evil and what? And he himself tempts. No, and that's so important. It's, it's two things to understand that the nature of God, watch this, can't be tempted. Y'all didn't hear that. The nature of God, you know what the scripture said? God's nature can't be tempted. So watch this. So when we are being tempted, we're not being like who we're supposed to be. We're being like what we fell into. How we doing? And, and watch this. Not only can God be tempted, talk to me, guys, and, and ladies, that God don't tempt. Come on. And so, so watch that. How, how many of you know that some folks be tempting in the room? Come on, talk to me. M many of us actually operate our lives, say things out of our mouths, get dressed or don't get dressed. Everybody look straight. And like I said, hopefully these are mediums. I'm not trying to one, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to do the skinny, you know. <laughs> My wife like, make sure you, you know, put shirt, don't need all, don't be tempting folks. Why, why is this? Well, how, how many of you know, sometimes out of our insecurities, you know it's a temptation and you do it anyway. Come on, talk. Everybody look straight so you don't think I'm looking at you. I'm looking at all of you though. Watch this. He says, watch this. Verse 14, it says, what? But who? It says, but every person is tempted when he or she is drawn away, when they are enticed and baited by Satan himself. Is that what it said? Oh. It says, when they are baited by their own evil desire, their own lust, their own passion. See, how many of you know that pride begins to cause what we want to become a God. Y'all hear me? Come on, verse 15, it says what? It says what? Then what? Then the evil desire, when it has what? Conceived, gives birth to... See, see y'all don't even understand that, that intercourse takes place in the spirit when you walk in pride. Y'all not hearing me? See, see, when you walk in pride, you actually become a breeding ground for the enemy to impregnate you with his desires. How we doing? I says what? And, and, and watch this. And it gives birth. Come on now. Watch this. It says what? And it gives birth to what? To sin. Come on now. But how many of you know sin don't stop? Sin, watch this. Sin is always trying to take you to the end. Oh, come on. Come on, talk, talk to me. God wants to take you to eternity, but sin's trying to get you to end. Let's read. It says what here? It says, and when it is fully matured, it brings forth what? Death. Come on, let's read. It says what? It says, next note. Let's read together. It says what? An excessive focus on stubborn addictions is an expression of pride. Some people say, you know what? Well, well I just have addictive behaviors. You know what I want to call them? 
prideful behaviors. That, that's what it is. Say, I have an addictive personality. No, you have a personality that hasn't surrendered to God's lordship. Oh, come on. Y'all y'all getting this? Come on, let's read it. It says what? If a person, read with me, if a person, what, is walking, here you go, in pride, and their sense of, here's the feeling, of inner security is threatened, they'll become anxious. Okay? So, so, so watch this. If what? If a, when we walk in pride, and what? And our sense of inner security. Do you know what inner, you know what inner security means? Insecure. If you're, you're looking to get your security from you, you will be insecure. And when, watch this, and when your insecurities are threatened, how are we doing? I'm slowing it down for you. When your insecurities are threatened because I'm not, because I'm not putting my, my faith and my trust solely in God, then guess what? That insecurity that gets threatened makes you anxious. How, how are we doing? Come on, let's read it. It says what? It says this next, it says this anxiety and what is this word I put together? Dis-ease. Talk to me. See, see, this means I lack. Okay? So when I lack ease, when I lack peace, God calls that a disease. Y'all didn't hear me. When, when I lack ease, when I lack peace, how many of you know pride will always make you anxious when the focus is always on you? Whether you realize it or not, that's why you're so uneasy. That's why you keep having doubts, because you have a disease. Come on, let's read it. It says what? It says here, it says the anxiety, the disease, what? That comes from being self-reliant causes a person to seek comfort in a variety. Talk to me. In a variety of what? In a variety of what? Unhealthy ways. And those unhealthy ways are your addiction. Come on, guys. So, some of you are addicted to Fred. Y'all hear me? Fred. Some of you are addicted to Sally. Some of us actually, watch this. Everybody look straight. I'm going to get the rest of you because some of you are lying. Oh, I ain't addicted to no man. I ain't addicted to no woman. Well, we can't keep you away from them. You do everything they tell you to do. Some of us are addicted to religion. See, see, religion is my attempt to seek God. Re religion is when, when, you know what, let me add to what he said. L you know, I don't, it don't take all that. I don't have to do all that. L let, me, let me just subtract. Let me, let me seek God my way. How many of you know that becomes addictive? You want to know why? Because it will never be enough. Come on, let's, we get anything out of this? Come on, let's read. First Peter chapter 5. We're almost done. It says what? Therefore what? Therefore do what? Therefore humble yourselves. Watch this. Demote, lower yourselves. Where? In your own estimation. See, 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 watch this. But you could never humble yourself if you don't have something greater to submit to. And, and, and now let me share something. Let me share a truth with you. The only one that's really greater than you is God. You hear me? So whenever you submit, try to submit yourself to anything else, it really isn't true submission because it's really not greater than you. And, and so therefore, it's called false humility. Y'all understand me? Whenever you try to submit to anything other than God, come on now, y'all been around people, oh, oh you know, you try to be, you, you trying to be humble to folks. You know, oh, uh, I just, oh, you just, uh, here's the slave voice, because that's what, how we act. We act like, oh, I just, I just love you, and I just want to be with you. And, and watch this, but in your mind, you're saying other stuff. You know, oh, oh I'm going to do everything you tell me. I'm going to be good. Yeah, you're sitting down, but you're standing up on the inside. And how does that happen? It happens when I try to submit myself to something or someone that's not greater than me. And watch this, the only one greater than you is God. Come on, let's read it. It says what? Therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation. Under who? Under the mighty hand of God. Why? That in due time, he's got a plan for you. See, watch this. You don't have to brown nose. Can y'all handle that? You don't have to kiss up to people on your job. Walk in humility. Serve them. 
Uh oh, it's a cuss word. Pastor Ted be cussing in church. See, but watch this. But if you don't trust God enough to humble yourself under Him and trust that I don't need to play their game, that true promotion comes from the Lord. Everything else is called manipulation. Come on, next, verse 7. It says what? Do what? Come on, I'm going to get you right here. It says what? Casting the whole of your care, look at this, and all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all on him. You want to know where those addictive behaviors come from when the thing that you care about, you don't give it to God. You, you understand? When, when what you care about, because I mean, you know, we, we, it's not wrong with caring about stuff, but, but he says, but how many of you know, an anxiety happens when what you care about hasn't been given to him. Why? Because if you hold on to it, it becomes yours. Talk to me. And you try to maintain it. Come on, that relationship that you're in, you trying to maintain it. Because watch this, if you give it to God, I have to do what God says about it. Because it says what? All of your concerns once and for all on him. Why? Because he's the only one that really cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. He's the only one that when you're asleep, he's not. Come on now. I know you love her and I know you love him. But guess what? When they tired, they go to sleep. God doesn't get tired of watching over you. Oh, come on. Come on, number five, number five, and we're done, and we'll, we'll talk about this. So, so watch this. Uh -oh. well, you know, I'm going to say this for the last one. The, the last classic expression of pride is, is number five. Y'all read it together. It's what? Needy for attention. Talk to me. What, what is it? Y'all don't even want to read. Y'all took offense. That's Sunday. It's what? Needy for what? For attention, it says what? It says this often drives people to jockey for position. Come on, talk to me. It says what? They rush for the upper seat. Here, here write this down. Write down that, that when you walk, somebody say that with me. When you walk in humility, the purpose for a title is so people know how you're supposed to serve them. Okay, I'll say that again. When, when you walk in humility, okay, there is a purpose for titles. Y'all hear me? The purpose for a title when you walk in humility is so people know how you're supposed to serve. So it reminds them how you're supposed to serve them. Y'all hear me? Watch this. When you walk in pride, somebody say, when you walk in pride, the purpose for a title is to remind you who you're pretending to be. Y'all hear me? See, when you walk in pride, the reason why prideful people love titles is because they have to constantly be reminded who they're pretending to be because that's why they need a title because they're really not that. Because watch this, when you really are someone, you really don't need a title. The only way, reason why I let y'all call me pastor is so you know how I'm supposed to serve you. But, but there are many people that need to be called pastor, need to be called boss, need to be called leader. Come on, I'm walking in. Need to be called deacon, elder, minister, you know, head, head person in charge. Why? Because they have to constantly remind themselves who I am pretending to be because you don't need a title to be somebody. As a matter of fact, they give titles to people who are somebody. How, how are we doing? We okay? I'm going to get you out of here. Come on, Matthew. Y'all better have some questions today. Watch this. Come on, Matthew chapter 23, verse 1 through 7, and, and we'll be out of here. It says what? It says, then Jesus said to the crowd, and to who? And to his disciples. Watch this. Come on, let's go. Th this, means, this means next. Watch this. It says what? It says the teachers of what? Of religious law and the Pharisees what are the official interpreters of the law of Moses? It says what? So practice, and watch this, this is amazing. This is what Jesus is telling them. He says, so practice and obey whatever they tell you. What's the next word? Whoa. But don't follow their example. 
See, see what? People that need titles. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, submit. You know, a, a, acknowledge the office, but don't follow what they do because they live a double life. Because when you walk in pride and when you are needy for attention, do y'all hear me? You will do anything and you will act any kind of way to try to get the fix. Watch this. It says what? He says what? For what? For what? They don't practice what they teach. And that's why I said so they're pretenders. They need the title to remind them who I'm, what role am I in? Next four, verse 4 says what? What? They crush people with what? With unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease. Come on, talk to me now. See, see, this is what happens in the world. How many of you know that people should be wanting to, people actually, you know, the world is, the world is business savvy enough. If we did what we were supposed to be doing, there should be business people in the foyer recruiting y'all to work for them and to run their businesses. Y'all didn't get it. Because how many of you know that people in the kingdom of heaven should, should be the best everything? There, 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 there should be a different way that we operate and carry ourselves. But the scriptures actually tell us, but you know what? When you're operating in pride, when you need to be somebody, instead of accept who you are, you actually act worse. Next verse, it says what? Verse 5, it says what? Everything they do is for Come on, come on, come on, come on. You, you, you got to get this, guys, because, because this is really important because this is, this is critical because some of us, some of you don't know that you are a minstrel on a stage. You are a performer. You're really not living for God. You're dancing for attention. Come on, y'all hear me? See, because the reality is, is when you allow God to be the one who makes you who you are. You walk, you walk in humility because you know what? I know who I am. And, and I'm not needy for attention. I, I, I don't need you to give me a title. I don't need you. You know, I don't really need to talk. The reason why I'm talking because I have to. Y'all not here.